it's your turn. Bloody hell. I realized that in season three, we really needed kind of a game changer. And we needed uh, the world to broaden and deepen. And, and, and I also became very aware, just instinctively, that we needed to get uh, news of a, of, of a whole other realm, a whole other race of beings that Helen Magnus had no d idea existed. Um, because, you know, it's very often that when some character is 160 years old and, you know, does what she does, that when something weird and strange happens to, you know, Kate or Will or Henry, she goes, yes, I've dealt with something like this before, or usually they don't do this. So we wanted to get to a place where she's like, I don't, I've never heard of this. I don't know anything about it. It's a completely hidden world, a completely new set of rules that her father may have been part of, that Adam Worth may have have be, you know been uh, exposed to but that she hadn't and so the audience is is going into that uh, discovery with her in the first couple of episodes of season three we were all still on, operating under the assumption that it was gregory magnus's secret sanctuary and then damon came in with a whole other angle on the story and all of us were kind of caught by there's surprise. Gonna, there's gonna be this city wait till you see it <laughs> <laughs> when we got to the point of, of talking about what it meant, we got to sort of expand it, that it doesn't uh, like it wasn't like a hole in the in, in the center of the earth and you went down this hole and instead of a magma ball there was like, you know, ape men. We said, well, what if it's literally just a, a world within a world and it's held held back by a kind of a subterranean Rome? When we were talking about it as Gregory's secret sanctuary, there wasn't a city down there with a whole society. When it became um, when it became more of a whole, a whole society that we were unfamiliar with, that's when we centralized it in Praxis. And I guess the, the, the short form of it was Rome. We used to call it Rome uh, in, in the office until right. we had came up with an actual name for it. I always saw Hollow Earth as literally just being a, a subterranean Rome, but like at the height of the Roman Empire, where you had Praxis being the city-state of Rome, and then all these territories and tribes and areas being like, you know, uh, the Roman Empire and its powerful reach. Uh, they give you water and light and power and security, but you serve Praxis. And um, everybody really liked that techno-Rome aspect that, that, that there were people disgruntled, kind of Mad Max type abnormals or peaceful farmers or whomever out there who lived under the auspices of a city-state that had ultimate power, but maybe they didn't like it so much, or maybe they needed it too much that there were certain, it felt like a good kind of mirror to real history. Hollow Earth was always meant to be this, like, like a mirror Earth, that there are sections of Hollow Earth under every continent um, on Earth. There's, um, <laughs> there are calderas that go down, there are uh, gateways, and that um, for 8,000 years, while you know, people were still forming civilizations on the surface, there was this world within a world, and it was where the humans and abnormals went to have a civilization safe from the rule of vampires on the surface, and that all developed into something interesting. It does play into our existing mythology as well of the vampires. Right. That I do like the way it's sort of linked together that the Praxians were at war with the vampires, and there's this whole ancient, sophisticated culture, two ancient, sophisticated cultures that predate human history as we know it, and that have almost been erased from the archaeological record and really only our characters are aware of them. Lucky enough to find, yeah, find out about them. My only regret is I wish we could have shown more. I mean, it's, it's very expensive to, to, to run into, you know, a horde of, of uh, you know, uh, Tabor tribes people. A notion that we wanted to show, show a bit of it, but imply that there was a great deal more. So we introduced, I don't know, four or five races, the Harusans, the the Bedouin tribe, the Tabors, uh, the, Tabors uh, the luminescent uh, women. Uh, and then in 20, um, we of course needed to add a few more. I think there's a rock creature and uh, some other unnamed tribes that we don't delve into too much detail about. But everybody else responded to it. They loved the idea of there being kind of, you know, muggle world and the wizard world and this sort of dualistic nature and, and that there's a world within a world and this could be where monsters first came from and it took on a life of its own which I had no you know b you know that wasn't my intention I wasn't the genius behind all that but just by sort of saying why don't we do a um, you know a, a reboot on the idea of hollow earth and make it uh, our own version seemed to gain a lot of traction and buy us a lot of stories and help us explain a lot about what happened in Cali 3 uh, where Gregory Magnus had been where Adam Worth had been 
who these monsters were that Magnus had never seen, what, what's the threat, you know, allow an advanced civilization to be revealed. And it just was a, a grand frame within to put all the adventures and issues and problems and solutions of season three into. So it's a very worthwhile conceit for us. And then literally I was just looking for the sanctuary um, sort of corollary to aliens, discovering a mothership beyond the clouds or behind a mountain, which is that there's something bigger and more powerful at play. And the invasion of Earth is still the issue, but it's more from within than from without. And so we don't do aliens on sanctuary. That's sort of one thing people often uh, put on boards or Twitter and post like, well, when are there going to be aliens? And I'm like, just there won't be aliens. We, all, we make jokes about the fact that there's no aliens. Do you think maybe they're uh, not of this earth? Don't be ridiculous. <sighs> they're abnormals. Get a grip. Cool device, chameleon people. There has to be a real DMZ between the type of show we do and the type of show that space shows do. It just has to be, otherwise you're kind of cutting someone else's grass in, in a selfish, bad way. It mean, and there's no way we're even remotely close to out of ideas to have to say, and there's aliens. It creates this rich backstory for the whole world that they live in that we hopefully will be able to explore in the future because, you know, spoiler, we probably won't be going back to Hollow Earth. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, after the yeah. massive fireballs slash energy wave. After the apocalypse, courtesy <laughs> of. <laughs> and action! By the time you're watching this, you've watched episode 20 uh, of the season, directed by me, um, and seen the fact that Praxis has been destroyed. So um, that was very deliberate. Um, we knew we'd do it at some point, and we teed up from the moment we created it, that such a place can't just keep existing. You know, uh, otherwise it's just like, well, let's just go to Praxis and use their death machine, or their this, or their that, or their cyber things in their super subway system, or the giant abnormals, and, you know, get them to help. I think it's opened up a lot of possibilities for season four as well, now that we have this massive horde of abnormals that we've never seen before, uh, that have now found their way onto the surface, and, uh, you know, Let's hope we can continue the adventures of trying to stop dangerous abnormals on the surface right through season four. We end season three with essentially it's like a prison break. You know, it's like a flood of, of badasses and strange and powerful and, and, and interesting, fascinating creatures flooding onto the surface. And how do we contain that? How do we, what do we tell the public? What does the public think? How do governments react? How dangerous are they? What's, are they all dangerous? Are they, is there stuff we can learn? How many do we have to hunt down, put in sanctuaries? How many need to die? How many can be allowed to stay free? Uh, what's public opinion? It, it opens up things for season four in a wonderful, wonderful way. And I think it'll, it'll, it'll um, launch a lot of stories. Not the least of which is how the hell does uh, uh, Helen Magnus get back from living in the past? So uh, you'll have to stay tuned. But definitely we were teeing up uh, a very rich stew for season four, deliberately.